This is James Robertson of Syncom Systems. This morning I wanted to show you some work we're doing in Seaside to make things a little easier and more comfortable for building applications quickly that hook to a back-end database. So here I've got a very simple system for blogging. I'm going to build a basic blog server in a couple of minutes. I've got a domain object here called post. I've got another one called comment. And the post has these four attributes. And I've initialized, created, and comments. And that means that when I get my editor form for those, I don't want to display them. And that's all pretty simple, and I'll show you how fast I can get there. So the only thing I needed to do to get this working is to come up here to Blog Server System, a new class that I had to create. And that has to be subclassed from Active Record Descriptor System. And this is how I tell Glorp, the object relational mapper behind our Active Records implementation, to describe and define the tables. So I'd add some descriptions here to tell it what my instance variables are on the Smalltalk side and what they map to on the database side and what their types are on the database side. Now the active record piece in the framework I'm using will pick up this type information from the database description and figure out what kind of form fields to display. So I have a similar thing here for comments and I've got a foreign key relationship mapped out which would also be picked up. So let's get started. Let's build a simple list viewer first. I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. I'm going to call this post list UI. I'm going to send this from my scaffolding framework, a class called generic list UI, and I need to add one instance variable, something called children. And this is part of Seaside. When I have a viewer, I might need children because I have multiple components that are going to be displayed. In this case, I have multiple blog posts, and each one will be displayed as a child object. So I go ahead and hit OK. The only change I need to make to this is to set children to an appropriate kind of collection. So I'll say ordered collection new, and that sets that. The only other thing I need to do is I need to give it some direction as to how to display things. So I tell it what objects you're going to display, and I'm going to say, return me your superclasses implementation of objects, but as a sorted collection, and since this is a blog, I'm going to assume that all the objects should be in reverse chronological order, sorted by that created date. And that's really all I have to do here. You'll notice I got this odd-looking method called children1. That's because I inherited an accessor for children, so I'm just going to remove that. So that gives me everything I need for the post list UI. Let's go ahead and add a new class so I can display individual blog posts. So I'll call this post view UI. And I will descend that from my generic view UI. I don't need any instance variables here. And I do need to spell, though. Still can't spell. There we go. Hit OK. And now in my viewer, I don't really need anything special. Eventually, if I were going to add comments into this, I would need a way to add comments, because when I'm viewing a post, I might want to comment on it. I'm going to leave that aside for the moment and define the last class I need for a minimal implementation. I need an editor, post edit UI, and that's going to come from the scaffolding's generic edit UI. And now I need to add a little bit of code for this. In my editor, I need to go ahead and I need to tell it what objects not to include in the editor. If you recall in my post domain class, I had created and comments, which are objects which are not going to be displayed. They're initialized. So in my editor, I need to tell it, well, you don't need to display those. So I'm going to override the variable names, which tells the editor what to display, what fields to go and get. And I'm going to say copy without created, meaning give me back that collection of variables, but don't include that one and don't include this other one, which is comments. Just finish that with that. And let's correct that because apparently I still can't spell. And that goes ahead and fixes that. And then I need one other thing. If I'm going to have an editor, I need to have a save action. So in my super class, it turns out that the object you're saving is stored, oddly enough, in something called object, an attribute. 
So I'm going to tell it, well, go ahead and save, and then use whatever your superclass's implementation of save is. And if you're curious about that, let's go up the hierarchy and look up here in generic edit UI. And you see I have an action for save, which is just going to answer true, meaning that form is going to respond true, but notice this guy doesn't talk to the database, which is why down here I needed to implement save to say go ahead and save it and then answer true, which is why super comes second instead of normally where it would be at the top. So you see this framework I've got, WA component is the basic seaside framework, then down here I'm subclassing from that. Now I've almost done enough to get a basic blog server up. One other thing I have to do, or two really, I need to tell the server system, let's make sure those tables exist. So by sending recreate tables to the server system, it'll drop and re recreate the tables, dropping them if they exist. And then I send initialize to all three of these classes. And what that does in seaside terms, which you'll see in a moment here, and you can tell I was running through this before, and in seaside terms, that puts this here. And if I follow that, I get this. And now you see I've got a list. Obviously, there are no objects in the database, so I'm going to create one. So let's go ahead and say this is a post. This is some text. Let's go ahead and hit save. And there it is. You notice it laid itself out. It already knows how to do that in a nice kind of interesting tabular form. I'll hit that and I get a nice viewer for my post. And you notice I have default actions for either edit, which will take me back to the editor, or close, which would get me out of the system, or delete, which would blow it away. So that's pretty much it. In a few lines of code and the creation of three classes to go with my domain objects, I've gone ahead and created a basic blog system and that's pretty much all I had to do. If I wanted to add comments, it would be another class here that I have to add, a little bit of hookup I have to do to the viewer to give it an additional save action for the comment, but that's pretty much it. And that's how productive you can be in Seaside with just a little bit of extra glue code.